technology that's ironclad. It's ironclad in all these assumptions that's formed like this iron curtain around it. And you gotta break through that before people who adhere to it will give you any kind of hearing. One of them is just fear. My brother, my sister, be careful if you raise your voice against the man of God. Even if that man of God is wicked, sickness will come on you. You speak against them, you would be cursed. That's the way we were taught. And so we grew up with a lot of fear, never to question the theology, the teaching, or even the lifestyle. They assume that these preachers are untouchable. If you touch servants of God, you will be judged severely that they're the Lord's anointed and the Bible says touch not the Lord's anointed and by touch they understand that to mean you don't challenge their views. Don't mention people's names on your radio program and your TV program. The Bible is explicit. False teachers must be called out by name. I mean Paul called out Peter, you know, the top dog. He called them out when he was acting in such a way that was out of line with the gospel. Touch not the anointed. They just take this idea of David not wanting to touch the Lord's anointed, Saul. Touch there means kill. It means harm physically. Sometimes I wish God would give me a Holy Ghost machine gun. I'll blow your head off. I don't want to kill them. I don't want to attack them. I'm not wishing any bodily harm to them or anything like that. I'm just telling you how easy is it to go through scripture and say what scripture says? The Bereans in Acts 17, they're commended for wanting to make sure the things that Paul is teaching are in the Bible. One, it shows that we love them. We love them enough to pray for them, even though they are in a very real way our enemies. We call them out in hopes that they would hear this true gospel and that... They... It's Brother Rob Wilson. I just want to let you know that if you hear those words, touch not the Lord's anointed, run, get out of that place, get out of that ministry, get uninvolved with that leader. A leader who's moving in the spirit of Christ does not move in the spirit of fear, obligation, or guilt. Two Old Testament passages, one where David refused to to slay Saul because he said he was the Lord's anointed. And one, I think, is in First Chronicles, which says, touch not my anointed, nor do my prophets no harm, okay, is what these ministers of unrighteousness always use to try to scare people into submitting to their will and their false teaching. False teachers off and wolves use this to intimidate and cause fear in people. Let me read you a scripture here which talks about the, um, the spirit that you have, okay? These people always wanna promote themselves to have some special power, super anointed power rangers, false prophets. It doesn't apply in the text that an abuser or a manipulator uses it. An abuser of the word and a manipulator of God's flock and his sheep. First John seven or first John. First John chapter two, verse eighteen. Let's go there. Children, it is the last hour, as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. From this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us, but by going out, they made it plain that none of them belongs to us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One. If you are in Christ and you've been drawn by his spirit and you love Jesus, it says here of those people, you have been anointed by the Holy One and all of you have knowledge. These manipulators try to set themselves apart as having special knowledge and revelation. Verse 21, I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And you know that no lie comes from the truth. No false prophecies, no false revelations, no dreams and visions in which people use to enchant and mesmerize the Lord's people. 
No lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? These manipulators always use do not touch the Lord's anointed to set themselves up in a godlike position. This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Everyone who confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he has promised us, eternal life. I write these things to you concerning those who would deceive you. As for you, you, beloved, the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And so you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he is revealed, we may have confidence and not be put to shame before him at his coming. Amen. Praise God. And brothers and sisters, this is what I want to tell you. The false prophets and the people who use these domineering, overbearing messages of do not touch the Lord's anointed, they don't want you to abide in Christ. They want you to abide in them. They don't want you to remain in Christ and Christ to remain in you. They want you to remain in them. It's a deceptive spirit, a doctrine of demons. It is to achieve a condition of manipulation, domination, and intimidation. You are the Lord's anointed if you are in Christ Jesus. If you can't ask a question, if you can't get an explanation, there's deception in the works. Peace and love in Jesus' name. Amen.